Select your destination. Destination, container field. Preparing for thruster ignition. Please hold on. Approaching container field. I'm picking up latent radiological activity in that area. Something must have contaminated the cargo. There's no way we'll get a clear read on the anomaly with all that interference. We'll need to find the source of the radiation and jettison it. My scanner should help me track down the culprit. Best guess? I'd say you're looking for levels around 80 or 90 decigrays. If you get into trouble, remember you can use the Fury module's induction panel to recharge your shields. Shields at 95%. We need to track down the source of the radiation, Jack. Radiation absorption at 30 decigrays and climbing. You're getting warmer. Watch yourself. Agitated deuterium ions detected. Deuterium? That's a hydrogen isotope. 
How'd that end up in one of our Helium-3 containers? Unclear. The processing line is configured to scrub any excess hydrogen. Ah, sod it. For now, let's just deal with the contamination. I'll dispatch a Fury to remove the irradiated container. Wait, something's wrong. What is it? I... I can't get the Fury transport to decouple from the container on the upper rack. I can throw the manual override on the Fury's hitch. Stand by. I'll make my way up there now. Approaching Fury transport. Careful. Once you decouple the transport's hitch, the autopilot's likely to kick in. So either get clear or find something to hold on to. Fury hitch released. Autopilot's taking over. So far, so good. Affirmative, but the container was breached. The contamination is spreading. Well, that certainly didn't go as planned. Okay, I've got an idea. If I release the container's maglocks, the Fury should just carry it away. Or it would if the controls were actually responding. You know what? Screw it. Just cut the power. Maybe that'll do it. Considering the damage, are you sure that's wise? Wise? Definitely not. But will it work? Only one way to find out. Shields at 95%. Do I need to mention this is a gross violation of protocol? It's either this or risk contaminating the entire shipment. Sometimes you just have to improvise. Jack, cut through those power supplies before the radiation corrupts our entire shipment. Cutting these maglocks should free the container. At least, in theory. Power supply ruptured. Easy does it. Ah! Holy sh... What the hell just happened? Explosive decompression. The escaping gas caused the container to jettison itself. Okay, so not exactly what we were aiming for, but... Uh... Well, I suppose that takes care of our radiation problem. Good work. The sensor should be able to scan the anomaly free of interference. Okay, good start. We still need to find out what happened at the primary dig site and on the processing line. Let me know when you find out more. Hold on. Something's wrong with that Fury transport. The one that collided with the container? What's wrong with it? I'm... I'm really not sure. It's moving erratically, veering wildly off its flight path. Could be a problem with the Fury's flight dynamics. Mm, probably just need to reset the Navcom. If you get a chance, would you mind looking into it? Copy that. And I'm not sure, but I think we might need to resynchronize the container field's inventory control system. Are these issues urgent? Not really. Neither one's going to keep us from scanning the anomaly. Consider them both secondary priorities. work Jack what is it nothing <laughs> I'm sorry it was just it was like watching some sort of weird robot rodeo cowboy Jack ropes himself a fury <laughs> Do I get a hat? A hat, fancy boots, shiny spurs. We'll fix you right up. Till then, you can just leave the fury where it is. 
I'll have Hera run some diagnostics on it before I can reconnect the remote link. Copy that. I'm moving on. Happy trails, partner. Liv, you were right. The inventory control system is out of sync. Probably got knocked off cycle by one of those pulses. In order to resynchronize the inventory system, you'll have to quickly scan each of the three I.O. ports in the container field. Hera, mark the location of each I.O. port on my HUD. Once you scan the first I.O. port, you'll have roughly 70 seconds to scan the other two. If you don't make it, the system will reset and you'll have to start again. That's one. Clock is running. 70 seconds. Fifty seconds remaining. One more to go. seconds remaining. Success. Inventory control station synchronized. That was impressive. It wasn't all that difficult. After all, I was specifically designed to handle these types of demanding situations. Plus, you're incredibly modest. Thank you. Select your destination. Destination, communication satellite D4. Preparing for thruster ignition. Please hold on.
I'm still trying to work out just how the hell we wound up with a container full of concentrated deuterium. I'm not certain. Deuterium is a byproduct of helium-3 atomic decay. But helium-3 is a stable isotope. It would take centuries for it to decay. I'm not reading a signal from ComSat D4. Hera, run a diagnostic on satellite D4. Scanning. Satellite offline. Solar panels are operational, but their current wattage is at 5% of their effective PTC rating. Hmm. Interference from the anomaly, I suspect. It should have a backup battery for these situations, though. I'll open the maintenance hatch and take a look. Athena, bring up the next candidate, please. Echo program candidate number 37. Lieutenant Rhodes, Olivia J. Ah, now this one's promising. Accepted into the U.S. and Aerospace Academy at 16. Exemplary marks in engineering, geology, robotics. <laughs> Elite stuff. All the versatility you could want on an astronaut. The USN even approached her for the five years initiative, but she declined. I'm not interested in leaving the solar system, I guess. And a psych profile. She's right on the money. Took some prying, but the interviewer got her to open up about her family. The younger brother, Jackson. You could tell they were close. Probably had to look after him a lot with two scientists for parents. That's just what we need for Echo One. She's perfect. The emergency control panel. I'll need to cut through before I can access it. I've set the satellite to perform a power cycle once I restore it. Gonna try the old turn it off and on again method, are we? In a manner of speaking. But I'll need to examine its backup battery first. The satellite's maintenance hatch. I should open it up and check its backup power supply. Hatch open, checking the battery. This battery's drained. I'll need to recharge or replace it on the Fury transport.
Satellite D4 online. Systems nominal. Nice job. I'm getting a strong signal. It may actually help us get a better reading on the anomaly. Did you know that beforehand, Jack? Not really. I just wanted to fix it. Just can't help yourself, can you? There is nothing wrong with wanting a clean and functional work environment. Athena, bring up the next candidate, please. Echo program candidate number 37. Lieutenant Rhodes, Olivia J. Ah, now this one's promising. Accepted into the USN Aerospace Academy at 16. Exemplary marks in engineering, geology, robotics. <laughs> Elite stuff. All the versatility you could want on an astronaut. The USN even approached her for the five years initiative, but she declined interested in leaving the solar system, I guess. And a psych profile. She's right on the money. Took some prying, but the interviewer got her to open up about her family. A younger brother, Jackson. You could tell they were close. Probably had to look after him a lot with two scientists for parents. Select your destination. Destination, primary dig site. Preparing for thruster ignition. Please hold on. <laughs> 